Welcome, welcome, welcome to my first episode of Legend Bowl. Legend Bowl is a simulation football game that's got more bells and whistles than Santa's sleigh. Gameplay is really addicting, but we'll touch base on those mechanics as we're playing through the first couple of games. In this series, we're going to be running through a franchise with a team that I've created in the game. And by created, I mean more I changed a few attributes, names, edited some colors and logos for the team. Um, of one of the teams that was already in the game. Today we're going to meet the starters of the team. If anyone gets injured throughout the franchise, that's when I think we'll start introducing the backups once they start taking over in their respective positions. The one downside of the game is that you, you can't move positions around, so you can't put a, a wide receiver at halfback or an offensive lineman at tight end, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to throw to an offensive lineman, stuff like that. Uh, that's, the, that's the one downfall of this game that I've come across so far, but enough about that. Let's get into meeting the starters of the franchise. Alright, here are your Connecticut Crusaders. We'll start with the jerseys. On the left in the white is the default away jersey. The middle in the purple is going to be our home jersey. And the one all the way to the right in the black is our alternate jerseys. We'll probably use those in our home games and some of the home games. Uh, but we'll see how the how the season plays out and when we want to use them. Or if you guys prefer those jerseys, I can use them all the time. Really, it depends on, on how we're feeling that day. Let's go ahead and meet the starters. All right, in the starting quarterback position, we've got Johnny Jokum, number six. His skill level is 84 and his strength is 81. Those are the main two stats we're really concerned with with quarterbacks unless they're more of a escape artist and, they, and they're going to be running the ball rather than tossing it. But Johnny Jokum is definitely one of those quarterbacks who's going to be in the pocket trying to hold it down and just tossing over as many short passes as he can because his strength isn't really where it needs to be to toss those deep balls. In the starting halfback position, we've got Tony Nugget, number 44, a rookie. What he lacks in skill, he makes up for in speed and agility. He's also got a pretty high strength level for the halfback position, meaning that he's going to be able to stiff arm and truck his way through up the gut and hopefully find some openings in the secondary to get through and uh, hit some home runs. In the fullback position, we've got Chuck Futu, number 69. The main stat I want to point out here is his strength level. He's got 99 strength. I think we're going to be utilizing him more on the third and short, maybe, you know, goal line runs. He'll, he'll run it up the gut, see if he can get anything done. But mainly he's going to be used as a blocker for Tony Nugget and hopefully be able to take at least one person down with him. We'll just go over the wide receivers really quick. Um, they're, as you can tell from their stats, they're not really going to be helping out Johnny Jokum at all. We we might get a couple plays with them, but I don't I don't see them making plays longer than 20, 25 yards just due to their skill and speed alone. But we've got Ruben Foster, the, the one who's going to be at the top, probably just because he's got the highest speed and agility combined. I know the skill level isn't really there, but at least he'll be able to beat maybe some of the slower cornerbacks in the league. We've got William Bogg at the number two wide receiver slot. He's also kind of in the same boat as Reuben Foster in the sense that he's a little quick, but he's also got some um, some skill behind him too. Um, so we'll see how we'll, we'll utilize this guy too in the in the coming days. Wide receiver three, Goshan Rotodyne. Uh, really, he's he's kind of similar in skill, speed, agility, uh, but the the main the main stat we're looking at here is his strength level. He's got 70 strength, which is pretty high for a, a wide receiver. So I think we'll probably in the franchise, depending on how the season plays out, we might start him just due to his strength level and use him as a blocker, maybe an extra blocker for Tony Nugget, just so that way um, he'll he'll be able to break off some more runs. I think we'll be relying on, on the run game a lot in this season. So uh, the wide receivers really, you probably won't remember their names much. But number four, wide receiver Donald Wolf. Number five, Poindexter Smith. And number six, Gansett Edwards. 
number one tight end is going to be Thurman George. Um, he's a, a little bit better than the wide receivers we've got in the sense that his stats are a little bit more balanced and he's got a pretty high strength level. But the, the difference here is that we're going to be running a lot of eye form and we're going to be running his way a lot. So we'll need him to, to hold to be an extra blocker for Tony Nugget. And a lot of these offensive players are really just doing that. Because the offensive line is kind of really poop, we'll just run through each of the starters really quick. We've got Yanni Yanis. He's uh, 41 years old. He's got 20 years in the league. His contract's up this year. I think he's going to be leaving at the end of this year, which is good because we need to replace the old line pretty bad. As you can see in our left tackle, Foster Codwall, usually you want your left tackle to be your best player, and he, he kind of is, but I, I think we could do better. We need a, we need a lot more strength up, the, up in the front, um, and as you can see through his morale here, it's not looking good, both of our left tackles, so their skill is going to drop off a little bit, a couple points when we get into the franchise mode. The starting center is Daniel Hewitt. He's... He might be one of the one of the better linemen we've got just due to his strength level alone. I think he's got the highest strength out of anyone on the line. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can get some run plays off if we pick on some of the weaker defensive linemen with our O-line. But otherwise, I don't think we're going to be getting much done on offense at all. The right tackle is Kupo Momo, Momo Stuff. Wow, I made that name and I still can't even pronounce it. Um, he's also got uh, pretty decent stats, but you know, they're all pretty bad overall We're just not really looking to keep these guys for long at all. We need to replace them I think at number one priority and then finally the lat the, the last on the line right guard starting right guard is Stanley Streeter again, you know, just more skill and strength, but he, he's pretty quick with the first step as you can see in his agility stat um, so maybe we'll use him to pull off and, and run over to the right uh, to the left side because he's the right guard. Here's where this team is really going to shine on the defense. Starting left defensive end, we've got Fester Orlando. He's got insane strength and skill, not too fast, but, you know, he's going to be able to plow through offensive linemen like it's nothing. I think we'll have some pretty decent stats when it comes to rushing yards on the season just due to our defensive linemen. The starting starting left defensive tackle, we've got Kerry Davis, also really high strength level, really high skill. Same kind of speed and agility that you see with the defensive end, but we're not really concerned about that. We just need to get into the backfield and make sure that we can stop any run that's trying to come up the gut. In the right defensive tackle position, we've got Jean-Paul Thames. He's uh, really strong, 96 strength, 89 skill, um, pretty quick also f with 59 speed and 57 agility. Um, I think he's going to be pretty good at, um, at, at at blocking or shedding blocks and, and getting through the line just because he's got a pretty high strength level. And then the star of the, the line, the defensive line, is Brandon Clist. He's got the highest strength level on the line at 97 and 93 skill. So I think he will be utilizing him. We might even be using him sometimes um, just when we need to run through a field goal or anything of the sort like that. All right, our linebackers are kind of where we fall short in the defense. Um, as you can see with the starting inside linebacker, Samuel Plum, he's, you know, Average all across the board, really. Nothing really to to, to, to report on with him. Uh, I hope that he can really hold down passes that come up over the middle, even though I think we'll be running a lot of man coverage. So hopefully he can keep up with the, the halfbacks and the fullbacks that he gets paired up with. In the outside linebacker position starting, we've got Lonte Blooms. He's really average all across the board too, but just a little bit better than the inside linebackers that we've got. So we might be using this guy a lot more just because I like using the linebackers. It kind of gives you the freedom to either fall back and pass coverage or, uh, you know, you could burst up through the line and, and get a tackle for loss. When we get to the cornerbacks, you can tell that most of them are really, really good. We've got some very fast cornerbacks. Um, because we're we're basing our packages out of the nickel, I'll just go over the starting three cornerbacks. So Lou Fusum, Joseph Ryder, Esteban Monroe. Uh, 
pretty similar in stats, except Lou Fusum is the best corner in the game, as Richard Sherman would put it. He's also very, very strong, considering the cornerback position usually doesn't peak over 70 strength. So he'll be utilized very well, and that's why I think we're going to put him at punt returner and kick returner, just so that way he can truck through anybody he needs to while still being able to run really, really fast. Starting safeties, we'll go over really quick. We've got Shane Lunar and Chase McDude. Both of these guys are uh, also really quick. Actually, Chase McDude's a little bit quicker than Lou, but that's okay. He's not very he's not very skillful, and I think he's happy just being the safety and making sure nothing gets by him deep. We can't give up first downs on first plays ever. We don't want to see first downs coming up on the board ever. So we're going to hope that our safeties can lock down the backfield, well, our backfield, and hope that we can um, we can keep it together. Our special teams are really nothing special. We've got Martin Domowitz, the starting kicker, and really our only kicker, and Ray Trudy as the starting and only punter. Both of these guys are pretty bad. Our kicker is decent. He's got a pretty decent leg at 85 strength, but his skill level isn't really good. And you'll see when we're kicking the ball what the mechanics are and how that takes into effect. I'll explain, you know, both of the, the, all the kicking mechanics once we get into our first game. But just for now, this is just meeting the team. Um, I just wanted you guys to kind of meet the starters and get to know them on a one-to-one on -one basis. Just because we're going to be running through a whole series with these guys. Last but not least, I'll introduce you to the head coach, Dad Stash. He's going to be leading the Connecticut Crusaders, hopefully to a legend bowl this year. We'll take a look at our roster sheet to see how we rank up against everyone else in the league. Our offense is rated 22nd of 32, and our defense is 3rd of 32. The special teams is 30th out of 32, and I think because our punter and kicker are really bad, we'll just have to rely mo mainly on our defense to, to hold down the fort. All right, we've got a little newspaper here. I think these come at the beginning of every week, and because it's week zero, it's just going to give us an update. The Crusaders make a splash hire. Coach Stash coming aboard. All right, I want to take a quick look at our schedule for the year. We're starting at home and then on the road. Uh, we got two road games, fourth and fifth week, so I think on the sixth week is when we'll have the first alternate jersey reveal. And then uh, maybe after the bye week, too, even though we're on the road. We'll see. Maybe it'll be the, the week we come back from the bye. I'm not sure, but at least those two, at least those two games, we'll, we'll see the ultimate jerseys come out. If you guys want to see them more, let me know in the comments or whatever, whatever you guys think. All right, this is what the week one is going to look like across the league. And so we can simulate all the way up to here and play this game here. But I think I'm going to save that for a new episode when that comes out. So thanks for watching this episode and hope to see you for the next one.